is an absolutely stellar morning because as you can see, I'm out on the water. Probably my favorite place in the world. I am doing an awesome trip today with Ryukin Fishing Charters. I partnered up with them for this video. So it's a super awesome charter company. It matches up US service members who are mates with Japanese captains out here in Okinawa, Japan. So if you're ever in Okinawa, Japan, be sure to check out Ryukin Fishing Charters. I'll have all their stuff linked in the description. Enough talking. Let's get out there. Y'all, I'm, I'm super excited. To start the day, you have about a two hour run to the fishing grounds. On the run to the fishing grounds, you have the option to troll. Trolling is done with a big heavy reel, rod, and line, and you troll some eccentric skirts behind the boat. You're primarily targeting marlin, wahoo, tuna, and mahi, and it's probably the way most big fish are caught on these boats. Each boat has between three and five trolling spots, so if no one owns trolling gear, you have the option to rent from the mate. If a bunch of guys own their own trolling gear, they can bring it and fill in those three to five spots. I typically don't troll and catch plenty of fish, but that's just because I don't own my own setup. And I know one of these days I'm gonna be on the boat and we're gonna catch a giant marlin and I'm gonna be pretty jealous of that guy that gets to reel it in. All right, nothing on the initial troll this morning. We just pulled up to our first spot, which is an underwater buoy. Primarily, we're gonna be targeting some, uh, some smaller yellow fins been a lot of bait around at these uh, at these areas so we'll see what we can get so the rig I got today is pretty interesting so last trip I was normal using a normal butterfly jig and I caught a couple tuna but the captain I was fishing with was using this rig and he was cooking up probably 10 10 to my two so you know like a five to one difference so all it is is this weird looking piece of wire and you snap on a vertical jig it's about 150 gram jig then you have a long length of leader. I probably went a little bit too long. And then these little things are called darters that I bought out here on like a 2-0 extra strong hook. And it gets it real deep and you jig it and the tuna are crushing it. I think the tuna are primarily feeding on small bait. So getting this small bait into their strike zone. We'll see what we can do. So the captain's marking stuff at about they said 60 feet, so my line changes colors every 10 meters, so I'll probably drop it down to about 80. Oh, there's a little tuna right there. Red again, that's about 50. Again, and that's about 80. Quick drag check. I don't need it super tight. There we go. Fish on. You little missiles. There's a little football. Come here, dude. Hook you. Boom. Such a pretty little fish. Super fun on this light jigging gear. Tastes pretty good, but uh, we're gonna wait for a bigger one today. Ready, set, go. Getting them, dude? Yeah. I'm sure that rod doesn't feel too good stuck in your side. <laughs> Better bring home dinner, right? Yeah. Gonna cook your mom up some dinner? Yeah. There you go. Feel that pump up and then reel down. Makes the reeling a little bit easier. If you pull up real slow and then reel back down. There you go. Oh yeah, he's fighting you. <laughs> he's not going out without a fight. Got it, buddy. 
heat on them. Oh, we're getting color. We're getting color. Grab that leader. That's good. You stop. You can stop reeling. Just gonna hand line them in now. Moment of truth. Oh my God! Look at that thing. Look at that. Caught dinner. It's a beautiful little yellowfin tuna. Good job, dude. Oh, we're catching them over here too. He's fired up. Oh, drag. Yep, that's exactly what we wanted. You know they call that the Palm Beach release back home? Because oh, okay. everyone from Palm Beach is too scared to touch fish. They're like, eh, gross. <laughs> Woo! Beautiful. Little juvenile yellowfin. Unhook him. Yes, we go. Show you guys how I'm rigging his darter. It's not anything crazy. We've rigged this off plastic, plastic before, but we well, just got a pretty darn strong hook. Just working it. Boom, plastic. Boom. Bring the plastic up here. If I would have had some super glue, I feel like this thing, uh, I would have liked that a lot just because it would have made it stay a little bit better. But yeah, that's about it. Nothing crazy. There we go. Nice. Go on. Yep. Yeah, you can. I'll tell you what, y'all. I, I can't believe I've never fished like this before. This has been epic. This is. Little tunas are definitely chewing. Um, I bet you there's probably some more big fish underneath them and or in the area. We just gotta weed through them. Saw one fish come up into the boat. It's about 20, I didn't get it on camera, but someone caught one on a jig. Basically the same thing I'm fishing. So there's some decent ones around. Right now we're in like, it's December 26th right now. So later around like April, May timeframe, they catch bigger tuna around like the 60 to 90 pound range. So. We'll have to be doing some of that fishing, but all in all, having a great time. It's pretty cool. In between spots and sometimes even in between drifts, you'll troll. So that chance of catching the marlin of a lifetime is pretty much there throughout the entire day. Changing spots now, so that first spot we were fishing what was called a, uh, or it was an underwater buoy, they call it a pie out out here. Those are typically closer to shore and they usually hold those small tuna like we were just absolutely crushing. Now we're headed to an out of the water pie out, usually a little bit further out and they tend to hold an enormous amount of mahi. We're actually looking at some fish blowing up right now, some little tuna. Is that Sam? Anyways, this next pie out that we go to is going to probably hold a lot of mahi-mahi. We're in middle of December right now and smack dab in the middle of mahi-mahi season. So it's going to be a lot of fish, a lot of mayhem, tangled lines, blood everywhere. 
it's gonna be cool. Fishing with dead bait, in this case sardines, is a tried and true presentation for areas like this. Essentially, you're just putting a hunk of dead bait on a hook, sometimes with a weight, sometimes without, and letting it drift naturally away from the boat. The boat's being pushed by wind and current, and your bait basically is trying to stay in the same place and sinking down in the water column. So, trying to make a natural presentation, make it look like a literal piece of dead fish just slowly sinking, and mahi-mahi tuna. Okay really a, a lot of everything come up and just crush it oh my god loose drag nice feels like it's a rainbow runner Uh, this is a rainbow runner. There's a mahi right there. All those blue ones are mahi. <laughs> Get some baits out. There we go. This right here is some of the biggest rainbow runner I've ever seen. Super cool. They got a really nice white meat. That's actually pretty much a sushi, sushi grade white meat. So he'll come home for dinner. All right, let's get some mahi mahi excited throw these swim plugs out there rip them across the top mahi usually get fired up just takes a little bit get them around the boat but once they're around the boat it's gonna be some fun times come on come on come on come on like to see. <laughs> nice plot. Mahi on the plug. This one's actually wanting to fight a little bit, which is good. Yeah. Struggle is just when you, you hook them and they don't want to fight at all. Then you bring them in the boat and they just beat everyone up. I'm just going to come behind you guys. I'll come over you. There you go. Oh no, I guess this is the bull. Here, I'm gonna pull him to the right and then bring him around in front of you. Good 
Maybe, maybe not. Back up. Go over you. What? I like that over Okay. Yeah. Got it. Tail's open. Let go of the line. He's still on. Now he's just got a hole in his head. Yeah, that's why that's why you open the bale when they uh gap them for sure. Woohoo! Look at that beautiful fish. Watch that plug. Beautiful bull mahi mahi. Probably like a 15, 20 pounder. Came up and uh crushed the plug. It took a little bit of convincing, but super fun. Sometimes these guys don't fight. This one fought pretty hard, so that was, that was pretty darn cool. Love these fish. How much they change colors and everything. So, yeah, we're gonna put them in the box, bring them home. Yeah, yeah, drop it. Just let it sit. Yeah, just. I feel like this keeps them, uh, keeps them fired up, you know what I mean? I just keep doing this. Whoa. Yep. Nice. Come here. Mm. Swallowed it pretty good. Just gonna cut it, let him have the hook, because I'll probably hurt him more if I try and dig it out. The thing should rust out pretty quick. Man, this is a nice one. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at that. The better one. It's gonna be uh, gonna be a long fight on this little rod. <laughs> That's how it always is. Had a little bit of a lull. One person hook a mahi. More show up to investigate what's going on. I pitched out and I hooked one. Action begets more action. This guy doesn't even know he's hooked. I got him on a real little rod. I'm gonna be in for a world of pain here in a bit. Oh yeah. Never gets old. Light tackle, man. It's sounding. It's gonna jump. It's gonna come up and jump. Oh! <laughs> fish on light tackle like this a lot of times it's just it's about just constantly constantly applying as much pressure as you can without really going past the breaking strength of your line so anytime the fish is giving me something I'm taking it you notice I'll go sometimes just lightly lightly touch the spool just slowly so I can gain back a line maybe even just take a half baby crank just slowly working back towards me oh my god this fish is angry Angry. Bail open. Coming over. Beautiful cow. Jumping for joy. Open bail. Now, this is super weird. I've been seeing this a lot. It's like it's like a parasite that literally eats into the mahi. 
So like it'll just do this perfect hole. Wow, we've been seeing that a lot out here lately. Parasite? Yeah, see them? If you can see the parasites in there, but like, yeah, that's when you see those circles, those chunks, oh. pretty sure. Last drift of the afternoon, and after this, we will troll back to port. We got a whole lot of fish to clean. So we're done drift fishing for today. Really got plenty of meat in the box. We got tuna, we got mahi, we got a bunch of big rainbow runners really plenty to bring home for dinner. We're gonna troll our way back on Marlin or Oahu would just put us over the top. That'd be an awesome bonus. So we'll see what we can get. Back of the dock, solid haul of fish, mahi, tuna, rainbow runners. Really, really awesome day. If customers want to have their fish clean, Michael, the deckhand, or any other deckhand will clean the fish for them. If customers want to bring the fish home, they're allowed to bring the fish home. So if someone like me, I could clean them here at the dock if I wanted to, or I could even bring them home whole if I wanted to. Really, you can do whatever you want with them. Again, if you're interested in a charter like this, Ryu Ken Fishing Charters, all of their information is linked in the description below, their website, their Facebook page. If you're ever in Okinawa, Japan, super awesome charter, super awesome time for all ages. So get on out here if you're ever in Okinawa. All in all, super awesome day on the water. Caught a good amount of fish. I had a great time, probably never caught that many elephant tuna in my life before. I'm Still blown away at how effective that little grub rig was. So, y'all, if you like today's video, please, please leave it a thumbs up. I appreciate that a lot. It does a lot for the channel. If you liked anything about this video, have anything to say, absolutely leave it. Absolutely leave a comment. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in that next video. Peace.